Hi friends, it's Charity from Group Publishing. Here I am again. <laughs> By now, we feel like old friends. You know who I am. We've spent the last couple months learning different ways Jesus' power pulls us through. A time of fear, worry, and uncertainty about COVID-19. But today, I'm gonna tell you a super awesome thing that you might not realize about Jesus' power. Jesus' power lives in us. Let me say that again, because it's pretty special. Jesus' power lives in us. Now, Jesus' power wasn't just something that happened way back, a long time ago in the Bible. Jesus, he continues to show his power in our world today. And one way he does that is by working through us, people. That makes me think of God sightings. Where have you seen God at work this past week? For me, I've noticed God at work through you, through families that have gone through this journey with me. I love getting little notes on on Facebook or little emails showing posters and thankful journals and things that you have done as you're learning about Jesus' power. I love seeing God at work in your family's lives. It's so cool. And it's cool to think that Jesus' power lives in us. But you might not always feel very powerful. In fact, Sometimes when we're going through tough seasons like this one, you might feel a little powerless. So, pause me. <laughs> you can't wait to pause me again, huh? Pause me and talk about this question with your family. What's something that makes you feel powerless right now? Hmm, for me, well, I mentioned that I live in Colorado. Well, my mom and dad, they live in Pennsylvania. That's where I grew up. Usually, I visit them in the summer or the fall, and I usually just find a flight, and buy the tickets, and then zing, bam, boom, it's planned. <laughs> but these days, I'm feeling pretty powerless to know when it'll be a good idea to travel just for fun again. <sighs> I feel powerless. What about you? What's something that makes you feel powerless right now? Pause me and talk about that. If we feel powerless sometimes, how do we know Jesus' power lives in us? Well, it all started not long after Jesus died, came back to life, and went to heaven. Let's find out what happened. Now, if you want to follow along, turn to Acts 2, verses 1 to 12. Again, that's Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. So all the people who loved Jesus, they were meeting together. <laughs> they didn't have to do social distancing. Suddenly there was a sound like a mighty windstorm. And I guess it was really, really loud. Maybe it was loud like this, or the wind was blowing so much that everything was flying around. Oh, it was really windy and what looked like tongues of fire. Yes, fire settled on their heads. So go ahead and hold your fingers above your head like I am and wave them like they're flames. <laughs> so, okay, you can stop the fiery flames. So far, this is pretty cool, right? But it doesn't show how the people had Jesus' power living in them. But what happens next sure does. 
You see, people from all different countries had traveled to Jerusalem at the time. Hmm, I guess it's kind of like me traveling to Pennsylvania. Well, these people from all over, they heard the loud noises and they came running to see what was going on. Jesus' friends, soon to be called Christians, started speaking languages they didn't even know so that all the people gathered around could hear that Jesus loves them. <gasps> wow! I don't know about you, but I sure couldn't start speaking a language I don't know by myself. Uh, it had to be Jesus' power that was doing it. When that wind and fire came, it was the Holy Spirit coming to live in Jesus' followers. The Holy Spirit brought Jesus' power to us just like Jesus promised it would. So let's practice saying Jesus loves you in different languages. We'll say each one several times. Jesús te ama. Jesús te ama. Jesús te ama. Jesús te ama. Jesús anacupenda. Jesús anacupenda. Jesús anacupenda. Jesús anacupenda. Yesua Isa jeter hesdika. Isa jeter hesdika. Isus lubit tibia. Isus lubit tibia. Isus lubit tibia. Isus lubit tibia. That's so cool! Did you learn a language that you've never spoken before? <laughs> I did! Now, before we go on, I've got a question for you. <laughs> yeah, I know, I have a lot of questions, don't I? <laughs> well, when the first Christians had Jesus' power living in them, they had the power to speak languages that they didn't know. So here's my question. What's something you wish Jesus would give you the power to do? What's something that you wish Jesus would give you the power to do? Pause me and talk about that with your family. I think I'll do a power pose while you talk. Go ahead and pause. <laughs> it's fun to think about all the cool things we could do with Jesus' power. But you know what's the coolest thing about Jesus? Jesus' power helps us share his love with everyone in the world and tell them about him. Jesus didn't give the first Christians the power to fly or become invisible. Nope. He gave the power to tell everyone about him, no matter where they were from. I think that's pretty cool because the message of Jesus' love is for everyone. And right now, the whole world is going through the coronavirus times together. A lot of people might be looking for answers. 
and maybe looking for Jesus. So now, maybe you've been stuck in your house for a while now. With everything closed, it, it might not feel like you're out in the world. Maybe you're a little bored and wishing that you had more interesting things to do. I get that. Believe me, I do. But friends, here's good news. Jesus' power lives in us, so there's actually plenty to do. We can be the love of Jesus in other people's lives. Jesus' love and power in us gives us the ability to do important missions for Jesus. Now, earlier, we talked about ways that we feel powerless. But God has given us plenty of powerful things to do, and we can start in our own families. So, think about this. How can you show Jesus' love to your family? So everybody, pick one person in your family and share an idea. Uh, so make sure that you come up with an idea for how to share Jesus' love with everyone in the room. So for example, I might pick my mom and I decide that I'm going to share Jesus' love with her by taking a picture of a beautiful sunset and texting it to her so that she can see and share that beauty with me and feel Jesus' love through me. Now it's your turn. Everybody pick a family member and come up with ideas that you can share Jesus' love with that person. Got it? Go. Those are some great ideas. Now, I know that you and your family have probably spent a lot of time together lately. Loving each other well may not be something that you can do in your own power, but Jesus' power lives in us. Just as he helped the first Christian share his love with people who spoke other languages, he can help you share his love with your family. Even if you're not communicating your feelings so well, or even when you feel bored or frustrated or a little annoyed with them. Hmm. I, huh, yeah, I'm hearing another question from you. Oh, good question. What does it look like to have Jesus' power working in us instead of on our own? Well, I'm glad you ask. Let me show you a neat science experiment that will help you explore that a little more. Okay, here's what you'll do. You need to stand in a doorway, kind of like this one and you're gonna place the back of your hands on the doorposts so that the back is, is touching the doorpost. Okay? Now, we are going to press out against the door frame as hard as we can for 30 seconds. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, 10, keep pressing, 11, 12, 13, 14, you might be shaking, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, keep going, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, now quick step out, and <laughs> your arms are going to want to just move on up. Oh, mine did it again. It is so cool. Now, make sure that everyone in your family has a chance to try this. So pause me, count to 30 again, so that everyone can experience what happens when you step out of the doorway. It's pretty cool. Go for it. So let's talk about this. I've got two questions for you. One, 
What did it feel like to have your arms move without you trying to move them? And two, what's something you need Jesus' power to do to show his love because you don't think you can do it yourselves? Go ahead and talk about that with your family now. I'll post the questions for you. Well, we didn't use our own power to lift our arms. They just kind of lifted on their own. When Jesus' power lives in us, we'll find ourselves being more loving, more focused on others. It just kind of happens naturally. So far, we've talked about how Jesus' power lives in us and helps us show his love to our families. But remember, the first Christians could speak lots of languages because Jesus' message isn't just for our family, it's for everyone. The whole world needs Jesus' love, and they especially need to know that God is taking care of them, even with COVID-19 happening. So let's sing about how God cares for the whole world. Would you stand up and sing with me? Here we go. <laughs> What a great reminder that even as we've been cooped up in our homes, God is taking care of us and people all around the world are who are going through the same thing. So I've got a special prayer challenge for you this week that will take you out of your house, even out of your country. <laughs> well, not literally, but you are going to pray for another country. So think of a place you know besides the one where you live. It's okay if you don't know whether it's a city, a state, or a country. Just name a few places. Huh. Okay, I've got one specific place in mind. Do you? Got it? Okay. Let's all shout our places on the count of three. One, two, three. Australia! <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, friends. I didn't hear you. Can you shout again? Maybe a little louder this time. One, two, three. Wow, that was so loud. I think I almost actually heard all of you. <laughs> Just like we do 
The people in all of the places we just shouted out, they need to know that God is taking care of them right now and that Jesus always loves them. So I'm going to start a prayer. And when I pause, say the name of the place that you named again. Are you ready? Let's pray. God, please help the people who live here. Shout it out. May they know how much you love them. Amen. Thanks for praying with me. Jesus' power lives in us when we pray for people all around the world, which reminds me of what I want you to draw in your thankful journal this week. You know that place that you named? Yeah, that one. <laughs> Look it up and see if you can find what that flag looks like or what shape the place is, and then draw it in your thankful journal. Or maybe you want to draw a globe. Whatever you draw, draw a heart next to it so that you can remember to be thankful for Jesus' love in that place. And remember that God is at work all over the world. Friends, I've had so much fun showing you how Jesus' power pulls us through. And I want you to hold on to your thankful journal even as life starts to get back to normal. Take a look at what God did during this time. You can keep adding to it and looking back at it for years to come to remember Jesus' power during this historic time. Remember, you can always look for his power and be thankful.